Yo, what is up my Nakama? So my name is Daniel and I'm a current first year medical student. And in this video, I'm gonna share five tips on how to make better Anki flashcards. Now, if you don't know what Anki is or you're looking to get into the program, basically what it is, is it's a software based flashcard program that uses space repetition to solidify long-term memory retention. And it's one of my main tools of studying that I use in medical school in order to handle and memorize the vast amounts of information that's thrown at us on a daily basis. I've been using Anki day one since I started medical school, and I can certainly vouch for its effectiveness because without it, I probably would have not passed like half of my exams. Now, although I personally use Anki, whenever adopting a new study strategy or a new study system, always experiment first and have sort of like a two week trial phase. So Anki is certainly not for everyone, but I think in terms of medical school or any sort of studies where you have to like memorize a lot of information at once over a long period of time, um, I think Anki is one of the most effective tools you can use. So, you know, before becoming like a true Anking, um, just experiment with the program and spend like two weeks like learning the interface, um, learning it how it works. And if you enjoy it and it seems to be working for you, then definitely continue it in the long run. Okay, so now let's get into the five tips that I would recommend you implement when you're creating your own Anki flashcards um, in order to just make good flashcards overall. Okay, so my first tip for better Anki flashcards is to stick with one fact per card and to be as concise as possible. So what I see a lot of people do is like they make a card that has like a huge list of information on it with like a paragraph load full of stuff um, written on the card. And I feel like this is actually a detriment to your memory retention and your ability to complete Anki effectively. I think that being concise with your Anki cards is better for both memory retention and consolidation. So if you keep your cards simple and you're able to go through a lot of them at once without like having to struggle with certain cards, then I think you're gonna start picking up on like the nitty gritty details of certain subjects. And as you do more and more of those cards, um, they're all going to connect together rather than having like a giant list of everything about one topic on one single card. And I think that just can become really distracting and um, can kind of hurt you if you're looking at a card and if you're spending too long on one card, you don't really wanna do that. You wanna be like as concise as you can be, keep your card simple and try and stick with one fact per card. Uh, for me, this has not only helped me in my um, memorization of certain subjects, but it's also increased my Anki speed and it's allowed me to be more efficient when doing my cards throughout the day. All right, so my second tip for making better Anki flashcards is to have the majority of the cards you make be closed deletions. So if you're familiar with Anki, you should know what a closed deletion is, but just to explain it for those of you who might first be getting into Anki, Basically a closed deletion is kind of like a fill in the blank sentence. So let's say for example, I wanted to ask uh, what cranial nerve seven was, for example. So I could write out a sentence saying, cranial nerve seven is the facial nerve. And what I could do with the closed deletion is I could basically mask facial nerve and cranial nerve seven, meaning that I can essentially make two flashcards from this one sentence, one being blank is the facial nerve and the answer would be cranial nerve seven. And then the other flashcard would be cranial nerve seven is the blank and the answer would be facial nerve. And this is a great way of testing the same concept in multiple ways, because obviously like in tests and in your board examinations, they might approach topics from various directions, basically just multiple avenues and angles um, for the same topic. And a closed deletion kind of allows you to do this. And also a closed deletion um, keeps things pretty simple um, and efficient and pretty concise. And it's also a really digestible way to like understand and answer cards uh, because closed deletions are such a simple way of making cards. I'm not a huge proponent of using like strict question and answer flashcards for Anki. For example, you might be used to making like physical flashcards where you have a question on the front and then the answer is on the back. But I think Anki is more effective with closed deletions uh, in my opinion. And so I would recommend having like 80% of your cards be closed deletions and the other 20% can be the other various card types, which I will get into later. Okay, so tip number three is something that I think most people do not do, but something that is really important and can save you a lot of time in the long run. And what it is, is, is to make use of the extra field section when making a card. So the extra field section has nothing to do with the actual question and answer of the card, it's what happens after you answer a card. So once you've answered a card, 
there should be an extra field section that pops up if it's filled in. And basically you can fill it in with anything. And what I recommend doing is, um, let's say you have a card going back to my previous example about the facial nerve and you get the question wrong. You didn't know that cranial nerve seven was the facial nerve. If you fill in the extra field section while making the card and you miss it, basically information about the facial nerve will pop up. And basically you can kind of like copy and paste your lecture slides on there or something from first aid, just to kind of reinforce what the facial nerve is and a little more information about it so that when you miss the card and then you can immediately learn from it. You don't have to go like digging around um, certain websites or looking in textbooks because the information about that specific topic of the card is already right there in the card that you just missed. And this will really reinforce um, your missed questions so that hopefully you get them right in the future. And it kind of like just reinforces um, the topic and it's kind of a quick way to refresh your memory about something that uh, you just missed in a card. So I would definitely recommend making use of the extra field sections. Um, you can put your lecture notes in there. You can put screenshots of various high yield textbooks. Um, so yeah, definitely make use of that. And yeah, it's gonna take a little more time when making your cards but it's definitely gonna pay off in the long run, 100% for sure. <laughs> okay, so tip number four is a specific add-on that you can get for Anki, and it is called image occlusion. Now, sometimes closed deletions just aren't enough for understanding a subject, and that's where you can use image occlusions for your advantage. So I specifically use image occlusion for certain long pathways, like biochemical processes and anatomical structures. And I 100% recommend using image occlusion for studying for your anatomy lab practicals. So image occlusion is a fantastic tool to use for memorizing anatomical structures. So let's say for example, you have a gross anatomical picture of the lung or of the abdomen um, from a cadaver. What you can do is you can image occlude certain words that relate to anatomical structures that, are, have, that have arrows pointed to that structure in the picture. And then that's how you can test yourself with spaced repetition so that when you have your anatomy lab practical, you are ready to go. <laughs> All right, so fifth and final tip is to use memory mnemonics to your advantage. So mnemonics and Anki are like a deadly combo for spaced repetition. So there's some mnemonics that are really ingrained into my memory, like SASH, for example, which is an acronym for the mature defense mechanisms, uh, which I believe stands for sublimation, altruism, suppression and humor. And that is just something that I'm going to remember forever because the combination of Anki and spaced repetition has just really ingrained that into my memory. And there's just a whole bunch of other mnemonics, um, especially for like the branches of the external carotid artery. And I believe that mnemonic is some anatomists like freaking out poor medical students. Yes, and the first letter of those words stand for the various branches off the external uh, carotid artery. So just mnemonics like that are really useful for memorizing information that might be kind of hard to learn at first, but then as you do spaced repetition, you'll just be able to essentially like regurgitate the information. That's how easy it will become. But remember, there is a time and place for everything, like how you don't use your bicycle inside the Pokemon hospital. <laughs> that was like a little text that came up if you were to do that. Um, just don't overuse mnemonics, but of course, um, they're a very good combo to use with closed deletions. And I think they're extremely useful when you have semi-long lists that are associated with like branches off of an artery or certain drugs that you use um, for some sort of disease where there's like a list of drugs that can be easily memorized with a mnemonic. But yeah, these are five pretty basic but really effective tips that I would recommend using if you're going to be creating your own Anki cards. Now, just to let you guys know, I don't create too many of my own Anki cards. I use a pre-made deck called Zonki, specifically the Anking Overhaul. And there's been so many updates to that deck. Um, it's a deck that's available on Reddit, by the way, um, in case you were looking to download it and use it for your own medical school studies. The reason I use a pre-made deck is because it does take a long time to make your own flashcards. And because there's a pre-made deck out there that has essentially all the information I need to know for step one, I thought that that would be the most productive use of my time rather than spending hundreds of hours making my own flashcards. Because in the pre-made Zanki deck, there's like 30,000 cards in there. And if you know Anki, it, it does take a while to make your own flashcards, especially if you make cards directly from lecture. But this is what I did during my anatomy unit because Zanki, I don't think it covers anatomy too well. 
and our anatomy unit was really about like our in-house material. So in order to pass my in-house exams, I did have to make my own Anki cards for that. Um, and what I did actually was I was in a group of like five or six people and we divided the lectures uh, between ourselves and we would make Anki cards associated with the lecture that we were covering. And then we would compile those decks into a shared Google Drive and then share those Anki decks. So this definitely lightened the load for us because if I had to make Anki cards for every single lecture on my own, then that would be really hard. And I would definitely spend way too much time making Anki cards than actually doing them and having the space repetition uh, kick in and having and being able to memorize all the information that I was supposed to. If you have any questions about Anki, I definitely plan on making some videos about how I actually set up my Anki, um, like organization wise and like what add-ons I use. Um, but otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you're staying safe out there and staying socially isolated um, and staying at home. And uh, yeah, just leave a comment below if you have any questions about Anki. And as always, Databayo.